My name is Danielle and this is Michelle. Without the goats, we wouldn't have the goat milk. And the goat milk is the most in important ingredient in our soap. First, they have to have babies. And after they have the babies, we let the babies stay with the moms until they go to their uh, new homes, which is about eight to 10 weeks. And then I then take them and milk them. That's a daily chore. And the milk is then collected. Sometimes we need it fresh for our lotions. A lot of times we just freeze it for the season, such as this when we're not milking. Because right now they're either bred or they're getting ready to be bred. Typically, I try to milk five to make it worth it. So I did invest in a machine, but I have done it by hand as well. So it's just, you know, it's not, it doesn't take that long. You get a system and you just kind of, okay. And they, they are very, very smart. So they, they like rhythms and patterns. So they come to the milk stand in order. They know when it's their turn. So it's a 24 seven thing. It's a commitment. Your, your life living on a farm, you have to have the responsibilities of taking care of the animals. You take care of them when it's freezing out like now and when it's 100 degrees in Connecticut, we get the extremes. Just rewarding to know that I'm able to do what I love, which is being around the animals and just living my life as simple as possible and able to use it and put into a business that the core of it is the goat milk and so it's an important staple of the business. And then to see the business flourish, knowing that it really does, you know, it does start here. So here we are at the studio and we are making goat's milk soap from start to finish. This is our precious goat's milk that Michelle just milked at the farm. So goat's milk um, soap, there's a process behind it, obviously, because these are liquid oils. And um, in order to bind the liquid oils together, you need uh, lye which comes in this bead form. Okay. This is the scary, like caustic part of making soap. We're gonna reconstitute the lye. So okay. the lye is in this dehydrated form and we're gonna reconstitute it over ice. So the reason why I'm using ice is because um, the chemical reaction that happens with lye, lye will accelerate water temperature within seconds. Oh. You're gonna see how fast, it's kind of like ice melt really. The lye is gonna be the component kind of that yeah. binds those oils okay. and milk together. And it's a misconception for a lot of people that lye is very caustic. Yes, it's caustic in the bottle form. If you get it on your skin, you'll burn yourself. Okay, I was gonna ask you what exactly you meant by caustic. So it's activated with uh, moisture. Oh, like bare so, hand wise? Yeah, so like it. your skin has moisture on it. Okay. So if the beads got on your skin, obviously it would activate and then it would start to burn your skin. So what she should have told me earlier was put on some gloves. <laughs> Safety first. They should bring your goggles. Yes, yes. It's, we always teach a class like, do as we say, not as we, we do. do. Um, Michelle actually does not wear gloves when she makes soap. She's hardcore. After I mix it into the oils, it's still caustic. It will burn you if the oils and the lag mixture gets on you. But after the 24 to 48 hours, this lye becomes a gas and it leaves the bar of soap. Okay. And so it changes form. It's chemistry. <laughs> all right. It's magic. It is magic. So all of our lies dissolved. It goes from like clear water to this like opaque white color. Like I said, I warmed up my oils. Um, we use two, actually four types of oils. This, the ones that I warmed up are hard oils. The hard oils are actually um, oh, palm oil and coconut oil. And so then the other two oils are liquid oils and we use vegetable oil and or soybean oil and uh, olive oil. And then the most important ingredient is obviously the goat's milk. Um, goat's milk is so great for this recipe because goat's milk has so much more fat in it. So the fat content in the goat's milk is just so high. And when the fat content is, is high, it's so much more luxurious for your skin. Okay. It's more moisturizing. So that's why we use goat's milk, but also because Michelle happens to have a herd of goats that you just saw. Well, that makes it a little easier. <laughs> so our oils, our goat's milk, and our lye are ready. Today, I'm going to be making a soap called Elements. It's one of our best sellers for men. It smells manly, right? Smells like a. <laughs> what is the actual fragrance? I'm not really sure what it would so call it to be. Honest. Yeah, so it's like a mock up of Aqua Digio. Digerio? I can't ever say that. I don't even know what that is. It's like a men's cologne. Oh, But it's I... kind of like fresh and clean, and. Okay. And we make 
the colors by using charcoal, ground up charcoal, and then we use blue mica. What is mica? Mica is ground rock. Oh, okay. And then we use titanium dioxide, which will create the soap to stay white because naturally the soap will cure into this like creamy color. Mm -hmm. And this particular one, artistically, we want it to be white. Coming from a male de dominant job um, and coming to this, I feel like I'm taken more, more seriously. I just feel like what we do here is taken more seriously. It fits the mold a little bit better as a female. Um, I do feel like uh, there's a lot of female run businesses in Putnam. And so that's great for us to collaborate and kind of help one another through the process of owning a business. All right, so the whole thing about making soap is making sure that everything is precisely measured and everything is ready to go before you even mix your lye with your oils. Um, reason being is you don't want to stop midway through and be like, oh no, I forgot that. Um, so we are all set. We have all of our ingredients that we need. So I'm going to strain my lye, and the reason why I strain it is because if there's any granules left in the bottom of the bowl, I'm gonna catch them like I see, because if they end up in my oil, um, you're more likely to burn somebody, and obviously we sell soap for a living, so we don't want people's bodies burning. So making soap is kind of like making cake, if that makes any sense, um, especially when we're doing the swirling patterns. We're gonna make one batter first, and then we're gonna pull batter to make different colors. But we're looking for saponification to happen, and saponification is a thickening of the oils. We're also looking for something called trace, and trace is a state where it's so thick that something could suspend on the top, and I'm gonna give you a visual of that as well. We have a lot of things in the works for uh, 2024. We actually have a board of ideas um, and some of them have come from the customers as far as like we need conditioner bars for our shampoo line, but we also want to get online platform for doing online classes. Not a lot of soap companies like to share their trade. We think there's so many bodies out there. Why not teach other people? So the lie is forcing the oils to bind together and thicken. Once they start to thicken, I can feel it thickening. I don't know if it's very visual to see it thickening other than the bubbles that are happening. That's when I add my essential oil. All right, so we're just about at trace. Now I'm gonna show you what trace means. Trace means I could take another color and I could suspend it on the top without that color falling through the batter. So where to find us is sparrowsoaps.com, sparrow like the bird and soap. Um, dot com and you can find us in our websites there but also uh, 350 Kennedy Drive is our storefront um, so come and see us actually if you wanted to come and take a class with us we do have fun uh, with the class time here it's physical class work so you get to go home with about 10 bars of soap oh, well. um, and a mold and the knowledge and hopefully the confidence to make more soap so this mold makes 28 bars plus four half bars I think there's many challenges running a small business. Um, I think the number one challenge is that making soap is chemistry. So with making soap and it being chemistry, um, there's a lot of factors and problems that could happen. So this soap is not guaranteed to work. If it doesn't work, it's kind of creates a problem for us to fix. We don't necessarily sell a fixed bar of soap, so we're donating those bars. I would also say we have overhead now that we have the storefront. That alone is a challenge. We try to make everyone happy, and like when customers come in with questions or they're upset with a product, obviously we do our best to accommodate or give them something new. But in doing that, that's you know that's taking it out of our pocket, basically. I know Michelle had mentioned the rewarding parts about the goats yeah. and that part of the business. What would you say for you yourself is? I like... would have to say for myself, it's flexibility. I left a full-time job, which was doing tree work and landscaping, and you're you're supposed to be there at certain hours. And so this is more flexible. Um, when the kids are sick, I can make time for them. Um, I think that also having heat, because this all started in two garage bays. <laughs> and, um, we always joked around about like, oh, one of these days we're not gonna be freezing, um, packing orders to be shipped around. Um, and seeing the public as well has been very rewarding because we were used to just shipping from behind the scene. People didn't see our faces. 
Thank you guys very much for checking out the video. Thank you for Danielle and Michelle for having me. So if you have a unique profession or business and you're located in the Connecticut and Western Massachusetts area and you'd like me to check it out as well as giving me the opportunity to try out the profession, feel free to drop a comment.